Welcome to Investing Bros. It is Wednesday, June 28th, and we got a great show lined up for you guys today. Taking a look here, guys, on the uh, macroeconomic schedule today. Right now, this is going on here in like, what? 13 minutes, 12 minutes? No, 22 minutes. Sorry, math is hard. Clocks are even harder. Fed Chair Powell speaking. European Central Banks, I believe, is who he's talking to today. So he may say something that triggers, you know, the risk on risk off mindset. That's really it. And uh, he's going to be speaking again tomorrow. And again, we're just watching for Friday. So that's what we got there. True inflation still coming in neutral. So nothing major going on right now, uh, Tim. Pro Ripple lawyer spots positive sign for bitcoin eyes 50 bitcoin but that's part of the range it's a lower bound of a range there's his tweet kind of speaking to that said if nearly 80 percent of bitcoin hasn't moved it might be a sign that people aren't selling very interested to see what happens with that percentage at 50 to 75k so that is kind of where we're getting that from of course he tweeted that out yesterday on june 26 crypto analyst will clemente shared a comment by stanley drunkenmiller which indicated that 86% of people who own Bitcoin at 17K did not sell when their Bitcoin plunged down to 3,000. So some very strong hands, diamond hands, some might say. In terms of a timeline, there seems to be not a ton in, in regards to a timeline, but we're ticking into the second half of the year here. We heard from HSBC yesterday saying that we may be seeing a recession here in the second half for the United States. And July is going to mark the first day of the second half of that year. So in terms of a timeline, Deaton does not give us that very clearly. Down on the hourly chart, way, way, way down, got some cool things happening here. You guys know from the show yesterday, we discussed this bull flag kind of forming here. At the moment, we are testing. We're still setting higher lows, but we are definitely testing this support level. We came down here literally moments ago, bouncing off of $30,010. I think 30000 is pretty strong strong support from a flat level even if we drop below though even if we wick down here to into the 29s notice in this flag these things happen we had two different times we actually broke above this level of resistance a little bit of a fake out a little bit of a false rally this is still forming even if the wick drops down here and does something like this and then bounces back up into it we still could easily respect this flag i told you guys yesterday conservative bull flag would put us we're starting down here up to the beginning of the actual flag pattern move this over to a potential bounce that would give us a price prediction somewhere here in this yellow box right here around 34,500. You might be wondering, Tim, where is this bottom level coming from? Well, that is with our market dynamics, multi time frame resistance. And that gives us on the 12 hour chart, we're seeing some come in down here at 33.5. So definitely keep your eyes on this box right here. You guys can see this morning, we did get our oversold and green triangle reversal with bullish divergence flash this morning. So as we're down here at the support level, again, could we get a wick? Maybe one. One more time down to this 12 hour support at 29.785 potentially and that wouldn't to me end this bull flag whatsoever first of all of course 75k guys as many of you know would be brand new all-time highs we're talking about uh move to the upside we always talk about fibonacci retracement we rarely talk about extension yeah there's not really a significant level on fibonacci the next thing of the level is about 81 745 doesn't mean 75 doesn't come into equation 75 was talked about a lot during the last bull market 75k that is i think we're looking at 75k possibly next summer maybe a year from now literally in june of 2024 Possibly we're seeing a $75,000 Bitcoin. So we've got Nick on today from Kadena. How are you doing this morning, Nick? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Better than I deserve, Nick. Oh, man. So it's it's good to have you on. We've been anticipating this for a while now. That's a good-looking beard, I must say, as well. We are a fan of good-looking beards on the show, as you we can are. see. I uh, have to shave mine because of my duty to my country once a month, so it's not in good form right now. But Tim kind of carries us on that front. So enough about beards. Let's get into it. Kadena is proof of work. There's been a huge movement over the last uh, few years, three years mainly, the big one was Ethereum moving over to proof of stake. Kind of looking at the future of crypto, Kadena, is it a so source of pride to continue to be proof of work? It, it is a source of pride, you know, like proof of work, um, you know, in terms of Bitcoin being classified as a commodity, you know, basically because of its proof of work status. I think that does a great deal of kind of shows that we, we, we maybe got it right. Kadena, it got started, it sounds like from, you know, kind of finding its roots in, in former traders and uh, folks in the, the blockchain industry early on from where it started to where we are now. What is really the future of Kadena 
as it's looking to continue to grow and integrate into uh, blockchain and Web3 going into the future? Yes. Yeah, so so the future, the future, we've got some interesting stuff coming up. We've got some really interesting stuff coming up. I know we're, we're talking about proof of work, etc. Um, but, you know, we're working on, you know, layer two, we're working on ZK and integrating ZK maybe into our smart contract language, as well as, you know, maybe on our, on our kind of L2 um, also. Smart contract wallets is another really, really important and interesting product development for us. Can't necessarily mention the names, but we are working with some different, you know, real life businesses that are interested in adopting Web3 and and we're interested in doing it so that the user doesn't even need to know that it's Web3. Very nice. Definitely some exciting stuff to look forward to there from Kadena. Integrating the ZK is, uh, is actually going to be pretty exciting to see. Um, already a pretty speedy blockchain. Perhaps, Nick, you could share with us a little bit on more of a personal level, Kona, what is your role at Kadena and what are you specifically, I mean, you, you mentioned a couple of different things there, but uh, yeah, what does your day-to-day -day look like? What is it like working at uh, a big blockchain like Kadena? So I'm head of DeFi or business development lead for DeFi specifically, but obviously I cover a different, a few other, a few other verticals. I mean, my background, I worked before Web3, I was actually working in equities. So for European bank and a North American bank. I actually had my own business working in kind of early stage tech, mainly in London, to be brutally honest. The last thing I'd ask is if someone is uh, very unfamiliar with Kadena, right, but they're in the blockchain, meaning like they have a MetaMask, they, they're they on, you know, coin market cap a lot, they're watching a show like this. What is the best entry point into Kadena's ecosystem if they wanted to develop on Kadena? We have a really, really solid grants program that, that we're running. And, you know, you mentioned day to day, you know, part of every day, we're reviewing grant applications that have come in from various developers and and projects that are interested in building on Kadena, potentially they've been building on Solidity and they realized that our smart contract language Pact is a lot more useful, user-friendly, easier to learn, easier to master, and also has that kind of cross-chain interoperability so that it's quite easy to shift between various blockchains if you, if you need to do that. We've had about 550 grant applications in the last four to five months that we've been going through. We've had our first kind of cohort of grantees who have come to at least the initial uh, maybe first or second milestone completion and we're going through the kind of evaluations of how successful those have been and how we can iterate on that and improve thank you so much for coming on and being here with us this morning take care this is actually showing that Justin Eubanks follows Elon Musk. I mean, that, of all people, Justin Eubanks is the one that Twitter is going to point out. Maybe he's the only other person that follows Elon Musk. All right. Anyway, it's Elon Musk's birthday. He's turning 52 today. It's his cake day. There's another story, even more interesting, I'd say, is that Elon Musk is beginning training for his fight against Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I don't know if this is a joke. I think Elon might actually do no. it. Well, hey, I mean, I think it's more likely than not. FID alleges Prime Trust lost access to legacy wallets in 2020 and used customer assets to buy back crypto. Oh, brother, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. Piper, let us know what you're thinking about this story. Yeah, so I'm just going to bring us into Brocam here because there's a lot of stuff in here, guys. Uh, and it's it's a whole bunch of tweets put together. This actually get, ties in a lot of people that are going to be in trouble. Uh, one of them being Prime Trust itself, obviously. The other one being uh, TUSD, um, Stablecoin, and then also some ties into um some exchanges so crypto custodian is prime trust and it finds itself uh in precarious um bad moves right now the nevada financial institution division threw down the gauntlet petitioning for the company to be placed into receivership so evidently in 2021 prime trust lost access to its legacy wallets and so they had to use customer assets to repurchase crypto this is where it gets really bad guys is that as of right now prime trust owes its customers around 85 $5.6 million in fiat currency, but it only has about $2.9 million on hand. When it comes to the digital currency, the company has about $69.5 million, but it only holds about $68.5 six million dollars that fiat side has got to be paid because you know that's the one that people are going to really hammer on they're going to go where's all of this money which is again uh 85.6 million owed 2.9 million on hand so it looks like they're going to have to sell off a bunch of crypto if anyone ever came knocking on the door saying they want their fiat the storm clouds even get worse though true usd depegged earlier uh yesterday right it recovered but it depegged for a little while 
And the big issue is, is that uh, Crime Trust has a large uh, holding of the uh, TUSD. To tap it all in together here, guys, the audit firm that was responsible for doing the TUSD is also the same firm that did the auditing for FTX before they collapsed and they changed their name. We'll keep you posted. t shirt what else do we have this morning? Here's a good silver lining. Fidelity Ready's new spot Bitcoin ETF filing. That's bullish. Not really much more than that. You need to see. There you go. Bitcoin miners send 315% of daily revenue to exchanges recording high interaction. Now, what you might be thinking is, oh, that's that's bearish, right? Money being sent to exchanges. Well, the mining revenue in Bitcoin network is intimately linked with the price of Bitcoin. Therefore, miners tend to increase their sales when they perceive the market to be robust enough to absorb the additional supply. This recent move could indicate strong confidence in the current market strength. Cardano is set to be delisted on Wabe. Will it dent the ADA price? We're going to be probably covering this one more the rest of the week as we do TA on ADA and I'm talking about it more there. But this is something to note. Qcoin crypto exchange to introduce mandatory KYC in July. This is a bummer here, guys. Bitcoin no longer crypto of choice for illicit crypto activity. This one is pretty interesting. There's a quote here, indeed cash and even older forms of finance such as hawala, transferring money without physically moving it, remain the default means by which Ill illicit activity is financed and its proceeds are laundered. Nvidia dipped on report uh, that US is considering new AI chip export restrictions to China. This would obviously have negative outcomes for NVIDIA, but also for AMD. The federal government is weighing further restrictions on export powerful computing chips to China, the kind that uh, that power AI models. The Wall Street Journal has reported. This is for obvious reasons, guys. I mean, the United States is kind of getting close to deeming AI a national security threat if it's in the wrong hands. That's, that's what's going on here. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. Great job. Now, if you want more content like this, whether it be TA on Bitcoin and Ethereum or altcoins, or you just want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest news in crypto, then stay tuned and tune in to our 9 a.m. live show every single weekday morning. It's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when you tune in live, use the keyword grip strength in the chat and you'll get a special shout out from anyone who's paying attention to the chat. Love to see you there.